right? Yeah. Yankees, best record in baseball. Let's start there. How do you guys feel about them in the American League? They stood quiet at the deadline, but they're still going strong. A lot of injuries, but a lot of young guys stepping up. I personally love it that they didn't go out there and make a move just to make a move. Look, with Brian Cashman at the helm at GM, he knows what's going on behind the scenes, and GM's calling up his phone just basically saying, hey, we want the whole farm system for you know a guy like, let's say, Marcus Stroman. And Stroman wound up going to the Mets, and for two top ten prospects, a four, four and a six in, in the Mets system, mm -hmm. you know. And with the way how the Yankees have been so far, they picked up guys like, they picked up guys like, let's say, uh, you know, Gio Urshela. They picked up Luke Voigt last year for practically nothing, mm -hmm. you know. And these guys have been absolutely killing it with the Yankees. It's, it's kudos to the scouting system of the Yankees. And it's also kudos to Brian Cashman and Aaron Boone for playing these guys. You know, and also, too, you never think that with, with all of these injuries that this Yankees team right now would be in first place. But yet, here we are in the middle of August, the dog days of summer, and we're here talking about a first place team with all these injuries. It's incredible. Yeah. It's insane. It's Absolutely. I, I think they've really maximized their farm system this year. Uh, the next man up mentality has really worked out for them. Um, just to play devil's advocate, though, right? So with the Stroman deal, I was a little surprised the Yankees didn't get more involved because, yes, from a ranking standpoint, those guys rank within the top 10 of the Mets organization. One of those guys is a 24-year-old prospect. If you're 24 years old and you're still in the farm system, you may never see the light of day. True. Now, the other younger pitcher at 18, that's a little riskier, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just surprised because I, I do feel like that's the one area that the Yankees are a little weak. They don't have the starting pitching, I think, that you need in October. The bullpen is great. We know about all the offense. How do you feel they match up against a team like Houston who went out, added a Zach Greinke to go with Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, and those guys? Well, here's the first thing that I want to bring up, and I want to bring up two, two things. Number one, back in 2010, when the Phillies had Roy Halladay, they had Cliff Lee, they had you know, Roy Oswald, Oswald mm -hmm. and there was another name too, Cole Hamels. Mm -hmm. That's starting four. Everybody thought that that team was going to make it to the World Series. And what happened? They wound up losing to the Giants, mm -hmm. a wild card team that, got that, yeah. that wound up winning the World Series in 2010. And then the following year, the Cardinals wound up beating them as well. And then in 2014, when the Tigers, they wound up trading for David Price and they had Verlander and Max Scherzer. They were supposed to be, that was supposed to be the, the three-headed monster with a Miguel Cabrera player, prime that wound, Miguel. a prime Miguel that wound up winning the Triple Crown, I believe, the year prior in 2013. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? They wound up getting swept by Baltimore. In the postseason, you never know what's going to happen. Hey, kudos to Houston. They wound up getting a guy in Zach Granke that wound up basically going out there and, and pitching the lights out when he was with uh, Arizona, uh, yeah, Arizona, Milwaukee back in the day. Kansas City back in the day when he won the Dodgers. Cy Young Award, Dodgers and the Dodgers well. when they made it, when, you know, when they made it to all those postseason runs. My thing is with in the postseason, anything's possible. Absolutely. You could have yeah. a wild card team go in there. We've seen it before. You know, look at the 2014 Royals. Yes, they didn't win the World Series, but they made it all the way to the World Series as a wild card team, and that team was down in the wild card game five like five nothing going into the eighth inning of that game against Oakland and they wound up coming back. But the point is, is that anything is possible come October. Hey, Houston might lose in October. Absolutely. At that point in right. time, you know? Mm -hmm. Cleveland right now, who the Yankees right now are losing nine two at this point. It's insane. But the point is is that you never know what might happen come October. Yeah. All you need is solid pitching and a timely hit come October. That's it. Absolutely. Now, one last question on the Yankees before we transition over. With the next man up mentality, a lot of young guys getting some shine. How do you think that's going to affect their playoff roster? Because they got potential for Mike Stanton to come back, Aaron Judge potentially coming back. Mm -hmm. Like, do you see them sticking with the young guys and saying, look, let's just ride the hot hands? Or do they say, let's go with the more proven vets who we can actually count on a little bit more come October? I think money talks at the end of the day. I think John Carl Stanton having a guy like that is just absolutely unbelievable to have in any sort of lineup. Any, any team that would have a John Carl Stanton, they would plug him in automatically. Right. But because it's the Yankees and because of the way how they played over the course of this year alone, 
you know, I don't know, but I know money talks, and I know that they're going to put him back in there regardless. He's a game changer. People forget that. The guy is a game changer. He strikes out a lot, though, though. He does, but he's still a game changer. He's still a game changer in the box. I think that they should just stay the course. I if think, it's not I, broken, I think leave so it too. as it is. I think so, too. And I Stan think that's may what come they should back do. and he may mess up the flow and, and stuff that, like that. That's a major risk. And that's a major it is, right. Right. But so. I, can't, I can't picture Boom doing that. I can't picture Boom doing that, what he... Uh, what he did so as yeah far as i mean doing that. i agree there's too much money invested um in those guys to just say all right we're going to stay with the younger guys i think my fear would be with the younger guys is how will they handle the adversity come october because we know um all these series are tight you know it's very rare that we see a team just get you know just swept and run off the field these are intense series that go that normally come down to relief pitching and who can execute those last three or four innings of a game mm -hmm. and if you got a young guy out there who's never experienced that could be a little overwhelming. Um, but I, I do think money will talk, you know. But also, too, sometimes in that October spotlight, you look at, go back 15, 16 years ago, a guy like Josh Beckett. Right. Okay. Game six, 2003 World Series. I'll never forget that. The guy goes in, young kid, pitches the, the lights out. Two hit, I think it was a two hit shutout at the old Yankee Stadium at the time. And the clinches. Deal. And clinches the game, seals the deal. And everybody's looking at this Marlins team like, wow, where the hell did yeah. they come from? Uh, it, it wasn't just Josh because Dontrell Willis was young. Yeah. Mickey Cabrera was young. Right. Right. A lot of young guys. You're right. That's, that's one of the few exceptions where we saw a young team just come on the scene and just say, right, we don't care about legacy. And Maybe even everybody. leading up to that World Series, beating the Cubs the way they did. Yeah. Right. Everybody focuses on Bartman, but they had to go into Chicago and win some tough games when Chicago was the best team in the National League that's, that year. That's, that's right. True. Even, that's even 2015, right. Roy, those, that Royals team, 2016, the Cubs. Right. They all have young talent. It's all about going out there, grinding it out, and just playing up to up to their par, you know. So, yeah. but sometimes people underestimate a young team as if you know their experience is gonna exceed their youth and their energy. And I think sometimes that's where veterans get get robbed because they're you know. <laughs> Mitch Williams said it the best on MLB Network about a couple of years ago, and he said something along the lines of youth and I believe youth and speed. Yeah. kill you in the postseason as far as going up against these uh going up against like an experienced right, team yeah. that could kill a team that's not killing in a bad way kill and kill a team in a right. good way yeah. yeah so we'll see what happens come october with the yankees right now on the other side of things the mets got really hot three game losing streak right now which is kind of tough this is the wrong time to go in the skit mm -hmm. um but they got really hot right before they got Stroman. actually cano was hitting really well mm -hmm. where do you see it going now I would like for it to, get, to continue to go in here, but me and Will go, like, we just, like, buttheads because when they got hot, Will was like, Sean, you got to just jump on the train, and you got to cheer for them, you got to cheer for them. And what Will does not understand is we have suffered as Mets a lot fans of for a long, a lot of long, heartbreak. long, I could say long, like, 50 more times, a long time. <laughs> and I'm the type that where it's come to, the, like, it's come to the point where I'm just expecting it to go bad. So when it so when it's good, I don't get too high. I'm like right here. So the fact that we won what uh, I think it was what twelve out of uh, um, well we had got fourteen, 14 out of fifteen, 14 out of 15, 14 15, 15 right, games. Right. Even then, like for every other team, that's like something great. For the Mets, it's like yeah, but watch them lose. Yeah, yesterday was a real <laughs> kick in the teeth because it was really bad, right? This past weekend, we had the two great comebacks against the Nationals, right? Then yesterday, it looks like we're going to do it again. We take the lead late, and then the bullpen gives up five runs in the seventh inning. And it was almost that reminder of, like, exactly. we, we've seen this movie way too many times. It's like, here we go again. Right. Like, they, they've got to write like, the ship. They can't go on another skid. At this point, it's too late in the season. They've got to stay hot. It's like being a Knicks fan. Uh, it's, oh, it's not as bad as being a Nick fan. Oof. Being a Nick fan is far worse. Trust me, I know. It's, it's far worse than this. My condolences to you. Right. <laughs> yeah, because as at least with a, at least as a Mets fan, I can point back to Subway Series or 2015 sure, when we you made can't a run. Even look back. You can mention 2006. Right, yeah. we had a couple years where we made yeah. runs and, and were very competitive. Yeah. Um, the Knicks, aside from that second round playoff exit, what was that in 2013 yeah. with Melo? Uh, we haven't had very. Very many good seasons, so it's not quite the same, man. But <laughs> this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? Real Fans Real Talk.com, where Arthur Domus, Trip Young, and Intern Tom.